name is George Ruto, a uh, career banker, currently working here at uh, Consolidated Bank. I head the internal audit uh, department with a team of about uh, six uh, auditors. And uh, yeah, other uh, than just uh, banking, I, I am a family man and uh, I also am a sports enthusiast. I do participate in uh, various sporting activities, amongst them uh, golf and, uh, and now lately I have really picked up on uh, running as a long distance runner, uh, a marathoner to be precise. One thing I realized uh, about uh, running is that uh, it started becoming, I mean after the first run and uh, you find that you've challenged yourself, now you want to do it again. And uh, that wanting to do it again, the urge of wanting to repeat that and, uh, and do it again is something that now made me uh, want to do more of this. But I must also say, uh, given that I was running in a group, uh, again, of course, through running, I got to meet uh, new friends that uh, we encouraged each other. And uh, again, through running, I have been able to to go to places that I've never been. That inspiration of uh, meeting new people, uh, going to new places, is a thing that I've always been looking out to. So because of that, you then kind of uh, get into the drift of it and uh, you don't want to lose that momentum. So you find yourself really having to create time because now this becomes like a hobby that is into you that uh, when you even miss oh, the days that uh, you hear uh, some friends who are running somewhere and you are not there, there is something in you that makes you feel like there's something that I missed out, you know, uh, and therefore you always uh, look up to them. And what then has happened is that over time then I have developed uh, a routine that has helped me manage this. For sure, it's, it, it's not easy, but uh, you have to sacrifice time. I mean, first of all, in terms of even uh, waking up, uh, I mean, I could not imagine waking up at, at, at four. I mean, at some point, waking up at six was early enough. But when I picked up uh, running, these days I would wake up at four, and by 4.30, I am out of uh, the house, and I would go do my, my run, uh, 10 kilometers, uh, 30, I mean uh, 60 minutes or less you are done and by 5 you are back to the house and uh, shower and prepare and of course by 7 you are out and you go to the office. So at times even uh, my colleagues wonder, oh and today you've run? Because there are days, like I told you, I do mid runs say on a Thursday. There are days I would actually do uh, 21 kilometers which is half a of a marathon and again that would take almost two two hours two hours 15 minutes uh, so again you still can manage and uh, get to the office so it, it it's about uh, routine and uh, and getting uh, used to it but I guess it is also sacrifice that uh, we do in terms of um, my lifestyle has actually changed because of the benefits that uh, I have accrued over these years because of, of running I mean one thing I didn't tell you is that one of the other inspiration was I was at some point very huge. Uh, uh, actually, I, my peak kilos, I was at 106 kilograms. And when I joined uh, a gym, I had uh, reduced to about 90 something. I used to oscillate between 95, 96, 97, and I plateaued there. More or less, I got stuck at that place. But after I started running uh, marathons, I have actually reduced uh, to below 80. At times I do, when I was running my uh, marathon, I was actually at 77, which is, which is really light, especially for my uh, height and, uh, and all. At times when I look back, I, I, I really wonder how I also got into that. But it was not just because uh, of just uh, this easy, easy, easy life of uh, you know you come to work, you f you know you do your work, you finish your work on a Friday. You and your friends look 
for each other where are you today maybe welcome or we can meet somewhere for for a drink or something like that on a saturday previously i would probably not think of any other thing as a leisure time other than meeting uh, somewhere where are we going to have our nyamachoma or where are we going to have i think it's that kind of lifestyle that uh, you get yourself uh, adding weight and before you know it in fact, uh, one of the things that triggered me was, uh, at some point, a very simple thing like tying your shoelace. It was like a challenge, you know, trying to bend down and uh, I, because you, you have a tummy that... Uh, and, uh, and slowly, of course, it, 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 it didn't disappear in a year or two, but it was over time. That is, those are some of the other things that uh, actually got me there. And uh, of course, uh, when you are over 40, they start telling you now you need to start doing things like uh, annual medical checkup and all that. And uh, that's the time you start realizing you've been told you should now start watching your dad so as to avoid, uh, you know, lifestyle uh, diseases like uh, diabetes or, or hypertension or you know high blood pressure and all that. So again, you see, there, there were many reasons that uh, I started finding myself uh, having reasons as to why I, I should be doing these exercises. The fact that, of course, I've also turned dreams to this exercise makes me also feel uh, happy. I mean, you're always, uh, uh, your, your mental uh, fitness is, is sharp. I mean, you're always just happy and uh, you don't want to look back and, uh, and get back to, I mean, life. Uh, the way we live it uh, is both uh, not cheap and also not expensive. It is relative to what uh, you see your expenditure or what you are spending it on. In terms of my lifestyle and my lifestyle expenditure, nothing drastic has changed. I uh, must say, when I used to socialize, and I still socialize with friends, but in a different way. When I used to socialize with my other friends, uh, where I would go for a drink, would go for a machoma and all that, would still spend uh, money. But now when I changed to, to running, uh, I found myself now diverting whatever resources I was spending on other social uh, activities to now investing in my running. And what you realize is that uh, with planning, it's not as expensive. Yes, I have traveled. Uh, I have traveled for runs outside uh, Kenya. Like I mentioned, the fact that I've gone to run in uh, Chicago the other day, uh, all the way in America, and somebody would wonder, how didn't you just do self-sponsorship all the way to to America? How do you afford that? But I say it's affordable. One is because first you plan early. By the time you register and get entered into these runs, you probably know it almost a year in advance. Like now, people are registering for Chicago 2022. You know, once the run finishes, they start planning for the next year. And by December, people would be knowing those who have already been selected. So I knew that I'll be running in Chicago almost uh, nine months uh, in advance, almost 10 months. Of course, once you know, then you start uh, planning. Uh, well, you, when you do bookings well in advance, of course, uh, the travel tickets and all that are way uh, cheaper than when you, you, you buy a ticket a month or so before. Number two, uh, like I mentioned, I normally run with uh, a group, Urban Suarez uh, running group. We normally travel as a, as a group. Many times you find that we not just uh, travel alone. So we we'll probably be at times about five, uh, ten. Uh, there are times like when we were going to Moshi, I think we were about 200. When you travel also as a group, you get a group uh, group discounts. Then the other thing is, uh, as a way of exercise, you find uh, running is uh, is an inexpensive way of keeping fit. Uh, better than even uh, going to the gym uh, where you have to at times pay uh, not little monies. The other thing is, uh, yes, food. You, you also start changing uh, the kind of food uh, you eat so as to, to maintain your weight. So you, 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 there are certain kinds of food, what we would call junk food, which you put away, uh, the, the burgers, the pizzas and, and all that. 
and you realize that uh, those are normally not a cheap kind of food. So when you go back to start eating, liking your ugali, even like when I'm in the office and at lunchtime, I would know where do I go and eat. I would probably look for a place where I'll eat my ugali and uh, kienyeji or with fish and all that. I must also say that another good thing about uh, running and uh, this marathon is it has kept me fit. It has also now allowed me once in a while to indulge. That's another thing because now, uh, when you say when was the last time? Actually, as 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 as, as late as uh, Saturday, which is is it uh, four days, five days ago, I ate nyamachoma. One thing about this running and exercises is uh, you 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 become fit. Your body also now develops uh, a way of. Uh, breaking down whatever uh, food you, you take to the extent that now I would not fear taking whatever I would want to take. What I would not do is uh, overindulge and by overindulging doing that say on a daily or a weekly or any other day. But once in a while, oh yeah, I would uh, sit down with uh, my friends, would eat nyama choma, would eat choma, would also have a drink. And I would not fear because after that, maybe a day or two after that, I would probably go for a run and I'll burn that. At some point, I remember before I actually became serious on the training, uh, I got into some other challenges. You know, there is a wheat challenge where you are told don't eat wheat for like about 21 days and then you push it or don't take sugar. Because, you know, those are some of the things that make you uh, fat. But after I started, uh, which I tried, but I realized after the challenge ends, you go back to your old habits and you regain your weight. So it was, it was really not, uh, not helping. But of course now with, uh, with exercising, with running, you realize now you can maintain. You can eat whatever you want to eat at whatever time, but you know yeah, you will uh, run and then you will burn that and you will you know, you not have those issues. So the idea is to continue sustaining. Between 50 and 70 kilometers, when you're preparing for a mile, and you run about 50 and 70 kilometers a week. Of course, that is for recreational. I mean, I call myself recreational runners like us. I know the elite runners would do about 150, 200 kilometers uh, a week. Personally, my target for 2020, one was 2,200 uh, kilometers in a year. And I must say my target is uh, amongst my recreational runner friends, my target would be an average because there are those who are actually targeting 4,000, 5,000 and some of them have already achieved their targets. I'm yet to get to my target because I'm now at almost 1,870. Uh, so I actually have about two almost 300, 330 kilometers uh, to go before the end of the year. But it's doable because there are times when we really push yourself, you can even do 300 uh, kilometers uh, in a month. So I'll still try as much as possible to get to that. But again, like, uh, you know, when you look at it from the absolute figure, 2,000 or 5,000, it looks like it's such a uh, big uh, milestone. But again, like I said, it's about walking uh, a step at a time, you know, a day at a time. So like uh, you break it down into this week, I'll have to do 50. Or when now you want to, like now I have to push my weekly mileage slightly higher so as to meet my target. So probably I'll now be aiming at about 70, 80. Uh, it will now mean I'll probably do two, three, four runs in a week that will be slightly longer than the normal run that I take. So rather than take a 10 kilometer run in the morning, probably I'll be doing 15, 15, 20, 25, 30. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if, you were, if I was to check my, my Garmin, which is the gadget I use for, for practicing, there's a place where you check uh, your fitness level and it will tell you according to your fitness level, you are 21 years old. Of course, my friends, uh, those who I run, I mean, uh, socialize with, at times wonder, um, I'm, I'm not the age that uh, I ought to be, and at times I tell them, age is what you want to be. So, uh, for me, I'm, I'm young at, at heart, let me put it that way. 
But of course, uh, when you want to insist on looking at my birth certificate, you'll be amazed when I say I'm 55. Because many people don't believe I am I'm that age. So uh, we have this thing every year uh, during your birthday, we have to run uh, your age. And uh, my friends now, uh, times uh, try to av avoid me uh, when we when we get to this because they are saying, George, I don't think we will do that unless you give us uh, one week for us to accumulate the the, the year. The year. But like I said, uh, and I thank God for for this uh, new hobby because yeah, a lot of people I tell them my age and they don't believe. Other than just my colleagues, I think uh, this has also been a, an inspiration to many. My colleagues, my family, my friends. Because having uh, seen uh, how I have uh, changed from uh, the big George uh, to what I am now, and, uh, and, 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 and continuing to keep fit, they get inspired. So I think, uh, like I always tell them, uh, this did not start uh, in a day. It, it did not just happen. It, it happened over time, and it also required a lot of uh, dedication and uh, sacrifice. Uh, and, and a lot of things that I chose to do. Like uh, these days, almost in any building that I go, I would probably not even use uh, the stairs. I mean, I would not use the lift, I would use the stairs. So even if somebody tells me we are on the 12th floor, 18th floor, at times I always say, where, where are the stairs? And they wanna, no, 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 take the lift. I say, I want to take the stairs. Before, I would, I would punt even doing one floor. Uh, before, uh, even, even taking a walk a short distance would be, would, would be a problem. So because of that, and I tell people, you see, I, I do take the stairs, I, I do walk, I do, I mean, people have now started also uh, following suit. So in, in terms of my colleagues, some of them are actually already more or less started taking up this uh, thing of, uh, of running. And also my family, uh, I probably meet them, uh, even them, my wife has taken into running because uh, of the results she, show, she, she saw in me and she said, even me now, I don't want to be left out. Uh, I have a son who at times when we work with him, people might imagine uh, he's my brother. <laughs> so I think those are some of the inspiration that, uh, and even him now is te taken up to cycling again because of the fact that he does not want to look like uh, he's older than that. Okay, one of the things I acquired also after running is uh, to now start reading a lot about running, about marathoners and, uh, and all that. And I have uh, seen that uh, for sure, I could even be still very young for running because when you actually now follow up, like you read the marathon uh, magazine, there are 60, 70, 80 year olds running. In fact, uh, even nine, I think I saw, is it 90 running in, uh, in Boston? So for me, I think I will run for as much as uh, God will allow me to continue living in this world because uh, I, I've seen benefits in, 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 in running. And it is good that, uh, especially in these uh, majors, uh, and when I say majors, these are the, the six uh, big marathons in the world. They even have uh, age groups, such that uh, now within certain age groups, you would you, you, you know, you'd qualify in your time and all that. So I want to continue running and uh, seeing how I can uh, start now. I mean, I'm not young anymore, so I cannot compete with elites. But maybe as I grow older, I'll probably now be competing with my age group in, in our category and seeing how I could get you know, a medal in that. What I always tell myself is I hope no other sport comes in to take up this space of running. Because before I actually picked up uh, marathon running, I had uh, started golf, which I still play. I'm also an avid uh, golfer. But I've realized uh, my golfing has gone uh, down because uh, I now don't play golf so much. Saturdays used to be the days for me to go and play golf, but now Saturdays have turned out to be days to go and, and run. Uh, I don't have regrets having started this, in, and, uh, and I cannot say I should have started earlier. Maybe there was time to do whatever I was doing that time for me to learn from it that yes, you need to get to the point where you are 106 and then you start questioning yourself like really, is this the kind of life you want to live? 
and then start changing my lifestyle and, uh, and here I am. I mean, so yeah, I, I believe there is always time for everything. Maybe it came at the right time. Maybe if I had started earlier, maybe I would have lost interest by now. Uh, in terms of productivity, I think uh, the fact that I run keeps me fit and I say it even, even mentally you have that uh, mental uh, fitness. I find myself more productive and uh, the other thing is uh, there always to be those challenges of uh, you know when you're big uh, afternoons at times can be a challenge because uh, you just from having lunch and uh, you know and I mean I never have those uh, kind of, uh, of challenges. Uh, I mean I would read a book and uh, I would not have those uh, challenges of oh I'm, I'm tired or you're sleepy or all that. I think I still attribute all that to to the fitness. Yeah. yeah. So yes, I think there is. Uh, yeah, people might have a debate about it, but uh, I think people have always said uh, the more fitter you are, the more productive uh, you become. And I want to believe uh, more productive than I used to be. We have now, as a group, of course, set ourselves targets. I would wish probably to do the all the six uh, world majors in marathon. And uh, okay, for those who do not know, the six majors, uh, you know, uh, New York Marathon, uh, Boston Marathon, Chicago Marathon, London Marathon, Berlin Marathon, and um, Tokyo. I've only done one, uh, which is uh, Chicago. Uh, God willing, I would want to do at least two every year if I get in. The other challenge is always getting into those uh, marathons because either you have to qualify by time or through charity or through ballot and at times uh, ballot and charity might be a bit of a challenge that's why now I'm trying to push myself to increase my pace so that I can qualify through time. So God willing I've already uh, balloted for Berlin and uh, London Marathon next year. If uh, I get a chance to win, I mean to get in, in, I'll probably go for that. But yeah, in terms of international marathons, I would want to probably be doing at least two uh, until I finish those uh, those majors. I have uh, teammates who have done all the three, all the six uh, majors, and uh, we normally refer to them as six star generals. So, and we have. Uh, a number, I think, about six in Kenya and a few in, in, in my club. Yeah, I would want to join that club of uh, eventually also being referred to as six general uh, <laughs> marathon runner. And, uh, and, and you've actually uh, said it. You know, in, in, in my story, you probably not may, uh, asked me if I've ever had any challenges and all that. Uh, and to get to where I am, uh, it might look like it was easy. It was like I, I woke up one day, started doing uh, short runs, mid runs and long runs and now here I am running marathons. It is not easy. They are, we go through pain. First of all, of course, in preparing uh, for marathons, uh, the, the, the preparation is not easy. The mileage that you have to accumulate, your muscles ache, you develop injuries, be it uh, TB, calf injuries, hamstring, uh, you know, um, various. But we keep uh, trying. What I can say is this: that uh, running or exercise, and by extension, running, uh, is good for your body. Start uh, slowly. Uh, step by step, like they say, Rome was not built in one day. You can, if you've never done any running at all, you could even even start with uh, walking, then go to brisk walking, and then start uh, running slowly, and then uh, then as you push. But what I can tell uh, those who have always had a challenge is that uh, it is doable. I never imagined I would run uh, a marathon. Uh, what I have also not told you is that uh, I've now even. There's a run that I ran which is longer than a, a marathon. You know, runs that are longer than marathons are called ultra ultra runs. I did one in, in South Africa which was 56 kilometers. So, start slowly, do that 10, go to 21, 42, and probably do more. But uh, just have a belief that it is doable. It may take you long, 
but uh, the most important thing is to start, is to tell yourself that uh, I think I should get there. And there are many people who have been inspired and they've already started and they're there. Probably now they've done their first half a marathon and they're looking forward to do uh, a full marathon. So it's, it's doable. Uh, it's a sacrifice, but uh, again, I think uh, anything that uh, you want to succeed in, there has to be some sacrifice in it, in terms of your time, in terms of your effort, and yes, in terms of uh, reallocation of uh, some of the little resources that you have from something else that you probably have to now, you know, investing in, uh, in running. And like I said, uh, running also is one of the most uh, inexpensive way of exercises unlike uh, going to the gym or unlike other kind of uh, exercises where you have to pay running provided you just invest in uh, good running shoes that's it and then of course uh, sports attire you can run within your village within your estate in, in a small field and all that so the average uh, pace per kilometer then I think I did was almost uh, six, min six and a half uh, minutes. Eh? It's not easy. I mean, uh, you've mentioned uh, Kipchoge and of course the elite uh, marathoners who run uh, the marathons. Then they do they are theirs at, uh, you know, two, 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 two minutes, zero something. But like I say, uh, or like all many other people say, I mean, I think uh, just choose your lane and keep to your lane. Of course, Kipchoge has his lane, and uh, we as recreational runners have our lane. There are those who are beginners, you also have your lane. Yeah. The most uh, gratifying thing for a recreational marathoner is uh, you are finished and you've probably earned yourself that, uh, that medal and that you've finished. The joy that you get for that is really good. There are times you finish with all that pain and you're saying, this is it, I'm not going to run again, but uh, two days you're back to training. In fact, we, have, we also have another group where uh, we have now called ourselves medal hunters. Eh? It's a group of medal hunters because now people are just running just to get the medal, just to finish and get that pride that uh, you finished uh, this marathon or you finished this. Uh, you know, the other thing about uh, marathon, it has also taken me places. Like I mentioned, uh, now Cape Town and then Chicago, now there are places that we want to go. But other than uh, there are those international runs, which are few, even locally, I have been now to places that uh, I never imagined I would be. Especially like in Nairobi, running around Nairobi as urban swarras, we've run through various estates, uh, various suburbs, that, uh, places I've never been and I, I was like, oh, is this part of Nairobi? So running around Nairobi and its environs, I've known places. There are places you'd go, uh, Kitusuru, around Lovington, around uh, Karen, around uh, Buruburu, you know, because you we run uh, off, I mean, on the, on, on the roads and uh, there are places you wonder, oh, this is, this is Nairobi, or this is, you know, or you just hear places uh, and then you, or you see a restaurant and you're like, oh, you know, a joint and you're like, oh, I didn't know this is where this place is, you know, that kind of thing. Initially, of course, I used to just wake up and uh, go and run alone. But uh, after some time, and now my wife has also taken up to that and uh, she normally joins me. And uh, now even that makes it even more exciting and uh, and better when you run together because uh, then you're not lonely, lonely running. Although even that time when you are running in the streets, you would actually meet people who are also running. Yeah, the, what you wear in terms of clothing may not be so much the issue. The other important thing is the shoes. And that is where a lot of investment in terms of running comes in. Because uh, running, especially in Nairobi, in the tarmac, is not uh, going to be easy and uh, on, 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 your, on your feet, the knees uh, and all. So you have to also invest in a shoe that has a good cushion so that at least uh, you would also not, uh, you'd avoid those injuries or minimize them, so to speak. Uh, one thing that you start learning after when you become a serious uh, recreational runner is that also those shoes that you acquire have uh, a useful life. So uh, you buy a pair of shoes and uh, you are told these ones will only take you a thousand uh, kilometers and after that really they are, they are useless. They will still look 
brand new, but uh, they are more or less the heels or the cushions are, are worn. Uh, what happens is that after my shoe has reached its uh, useful life, I will uh, give it out you know, to my relatives or you know, people at home, uh, you know, those workers and all that, and they will really be happy I've gifted them with a shoe that still looks new, but of course for them now it will just be a shoe for, you know, for just uh, walking and all that. But for me, in terms of running, I know I, it is done. So that is it, I mean, I, I don't have many, but what happens is that uh, after some time I have to keep on replenish and then I give out, I replenish, I give out. Given that now I wake up uh, very early, I have also gotten a uh, habit of uh, going to sleep uh, early. Because uh, rest is also very important for the body to recover. So I sleep minimum six hours. Uh, if I can sleep more, the days that I can even do eight, uh, the better. And you actually, that's another thing that I actually acquired. Because of that tiredness, once I get to sleep, I really sleep soundly and, uh, and, and I rest enough. But yes, minimum, I try to do about six hours. So normally when I know I have to wake up at four, at times normally by around nine, nine thirty, I am in bed and uh, yeah, yeah, around four.